Okay, welcome to Phantom Tabletop Gaming uh, podcast edition or vodcast. I don't, I don't know what to call this thing. At any rate, uh, we this today was a huge day for 40k players. Uh, Games Workshop released a big like balance FAQ and uh, did some things that were pretty unusual. And we thought we would just do a quick video and kind of read through the changes and talk about them a little bit. Uh, of course, joining me here today is Eddie. Say hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Perfect. I would expect nothing less. <laughs> so uh, you can find the changes on the Warhammer community website. We'll have a link down in the description below if you want to download them for yourself. Although I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you've already heard about these and found them some other way. But uh, at any rate, let's let's jump into the like the first big change they made, which is just a universal change to the rules. Um, and it's specifically for match play. But if you're playing Combat Patrol or Incursion-sized games, you cannot include more than one aircraft model. Uh, you can include more than two models if you're playing a Strike Force-sized game, or three if you're playing Onslaught-sized. So this is just like a, a just a complete changing of the rules. So for 2,000-point games for competitive 40k, you can only have two aircraft models. Um, yeah. So I think this change is this oh, is like a like a direct change for Adeptus Mechanicus over mostly uh, everyone, right? And orcs. Orcs are also running a bunch uh, of flyer yeah. heavy. Things. Yeah. So yeah, this this change obviously completely does away with those lists, um, which I think is ultimately a good thing. I think those lists were kind of going against what Games Workshop wants for Ninth Edition, because uh, they want you to kind of be able to hide your army on turn one behind obscuring, and aircrafts just didn't care about that. <laughs> That's true. Uh, um, those those lists were a little salty, honestly, which it doesn't really bother me too much that they they nerfed that a little. Yeah, you know, the interesting part about this change to me, though, is actually just the fact that they changed it in this way. You know, in the past, all Games Workshop would do would be, like, adjust the points cost of specific problematic models. Mm -hmm. This is just them changing the complete way that you build armies, which is, like, I think that this represents, like, a big change in how Games Workshop's going to balance 40k going forward. And I think that's one of the coolest parts about this change. Yeah, it's intriguing, if nothing else. I, I think it's, uh, it, it definitely poses a good sign of the future that maybe they'll actually start uh, being a little more even-handed, but, you know. Yeah, and actually going along with that, I don't know if you're familiar, Eddie, but they actually, with this FAQ, they also announced that going forward, in addition to chapter-approved points updates, there's going to be a quarterly FAQ similar to this one. So it, it seems like they're trying to be a lot more active in balancing the game, which I think is only going to be a good thing going forward. Exactly, yeah, that's that's actually really cool. I have to, I have to say that, that that's a good idea. Um, it is kind of frustrating, but that they can have so many changes so quick. But I, I don't, in a way, it's less frustrating than just randomly having some pop up when they do, like if they're expected. Um, right. Yeah. So like this change, I think, is going to make the barrier for entry a little bit higher for people that casually play, you know, like one game a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll probably feel a little bit like of a whirlwind for those players, right? Because they're going to play, like, once or twice, and then the rules are going to change. And they have to, like, kind of figure out how the rules changed. Yeah. Um, but for people that are playing every week, like, that's a godsend. So things like Drukari and Admech being so dominant doesn't last for six months anymore. Which I think is only going to be good for the game's health moving forward. Yeah, no, you, you make good points. Um, for the casual gamer, it might be a little overwhelming. But I think there's probably a way around that. Yeah, but also, like, a lot of these changes aren't really going to change casual lists a lot. Like, casual lists weren't going to be spamming three of the same flyer anyway, right? That, that's true. Well, unless so, they're, you know, kind of a dick move, casual. Player. Yeah, or, <laughs> you know, I think there's a, I think there's some Astro Militarum lists that run, like, Valkyries or something, which are, like, aircraft that can come in units of three, which this obviously just stops that. So it'll be interesting to see if they may add any FAQs regarding that. But uh, at any rate, let's let's move on. So the, the next section is the Adeptus Mechanicus one. And the Adeptus Mechanicus weren't changed in any big way on their data sheet uh, other than points. And pretty much almost everything in the army got like a 10%, 15% point hike. Um, with the exception of the, I think they're Castellan robots. I can't remember. I'll have to look. Um, at any rate, they're the ro those guys went down. The big punchy robots went down a few points per model. Yeah. But ultimately, this this point nerf is targeting the Skatari blob pretty directly and making them cost significantly more for those big twenty man death stacks. Um, 
And, you know, this is this kind of change is what we're accustomed to, right? This is what we everybody was kind of expecting to happen. Yeah. And I don't I don't think there's any real surprises in the Adeptus Mechanicus section of this. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, anyone was was not expecting this to come at some point. Uh, Adeptus Mechanicus has been really good for a while now. Right. And also, like, this is just this is the kind of nerf we're accustomed to. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, like, like, they didn't change anything on the data sheet. They didn't change any rules. They just upped the points, and this is how they normally do things. So yep. this isn't a super, like, interesting one to talk about, right? Like, the points went up. They're going to be able to be less efficient. They can't squeeze as many things in the list as they could before. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, ultimately, the effect that that has. I think Adeptus Mechanic is still going to be very good, but hopefully not quite as dominant as they have been. And other than that, I don't think there's a lot of interesting stuff to really dive into with this. Yeah, I mean, the only interesting thing really is going to be Exactly what kind of impact this is going to have on a lot of the Adeptus Canicus players, and but we won't know that for a while still. But um, definitely with the points increase, it's it's going to have an impact. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously it's going to have an impact. So um, yeah, we'll just we'll just have to see. But I think the Adeptus Canicus still have a great codex, and there's lots of interesting stuff. So um, I don't think they're in danger of slipping down to the bottoms of tier lists anytime soon, mm -hmm. even with these points adjustments. Yeah. Uh, moving on is one of the more interesting changes they made. It's to Astra Militarum. So they, the Astra Militarum section is very interesting because these are direct rules changes. They're not points adjustments, right? Like these are just change these models. Yep. Um, so the first one is change the safe characteristic of Astra Militarum Lehman Russ models to two up. So changing their tanks to a two up obviously is going to give a significant toughness boost to those tanks. Yeah. And it made a, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> huh, excuse me. Up dying. And it makes it makes a lot of sense, right? Like those models probably should have a little bit more durability than they currently have. So, yeah. Um, the next thing that it does is when using the tank orders ability of the tank commander model, you can select one friendly regiment vehicle unit within six of that tank commander model instead of selecting a Lehman Russ unit. So this means that their buffs can go on more stuff. Instead of just targeting Lehman Russes, they can target any vehicle, um, excluding Titanic models. Um, this is an interesting change, and I think it opens up a lot more options for uh, Astra Militarum. I'm not super familiar with a lot of their data sheets, um, but I think giving people more options, especially in an old codex like this that doesn't have the raw power level of the new codexes, kind of opening up the door for more uh, synergy, we'll say, is probably a good way of going about things. And I'm interested to see what kind of list people can build now with that. Yeah, it's definitely interesting I, I honestly i'm I'm not my, very familiar with them either and I, I think i don't think i've even played them in ninth edition yet so um most of my experiences with them were in eighth edition so I, I can't really speak on much but yeah anytime you can you can increase the ability to to do that it's definitely going to be a plus so i can't you guess you can't complain with that yeah and then the next one is i think the most interesting of these changes maybe not the most impactful but the most interesting and that is each time a regiment unit with the voice of command ability issues one of the following orders to an infantry unit, the same order can be issued to one or more other friendly infantry units, excluding officers, that are within six of the unit that the order was originally issued to. Um, so what this means is, is that they can do take aim, uh, fire, second rank fire, bring it down, forwards for the emperor, get back in the fight, and fix bayonets, which are all in interesting buffs. So they can do them to two yeah. infantry units at a time so now it's a lot more viable to bring more bodies right like you could because you now you can buff two units at once with the same like regiment unit with voice of the command um so i think this is just going to ultimately give the astro militarum a lot more like uh versatility in how they list build no i'm with you and i think it's actually really interesting uh i i am definitely intrigued and interested to see what kind of list this 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 will spit out now yeah, and I, I just, I really love these kinds of changes. Like, I love that going forward because in the past, it really felt like if you had a really bad codex, you just kind of felt bad, right? Like, this is coming from a Tau player, right? And, like, it just felt bad that, like, points fixes are not going to fix Tau in Ninth Edition. No. And I know we have a new codex coming out. We're excluded from this, and that's fine. Um, but just for armies that are in the same boat as Tau, like, Points fixes aren't just going to fix everything. If you're really bad, points fixes are not going to make you good. And the fact that they're willing to actually change rules like this and add stuff to rules and change save characteristics and stuff like that, that gives me hope that in the future, some of these bad armies are actually going to get fixed between codex updates. And I think that that's nothing but going to be a good thing for the health yeah, of the game. Especially forward. them saying they're going to be adding those points monthly, uh, changing the, the, the or, FAQs. Quarterly. Order. Yeah, quarterly. Yeah. Sorry, quarterly. Yeah, that's yeah. that's uh, um, that's really cool. I'm not going to lie. 
it definitely it gives you more uh, more hope you know especially with some of these armies yeah. like you know uh, with Blood Angels, you know, we're a, we're mediocre at best, but, you know, we're staying there. But, like, say at some point we aren't there, I wouldn't feel so bad about, well, we'll now have to wait to the whole next edition. And at right. some point during that, we're going to get a Codex release, and then we will be okay for a little while. And so with the with the promise of this, this, this you know, quarterly updates, it, at least I have hope, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's kind of what it's all about, and that's why I like it. Um, but anyway, moving forward uh, for, to Chaos Space Marines... So uh, they have ability called Death to the False Emperor, and what it used to do was it made sixes to hit against Imperium units generate an extra attack, um, specifically against Imperium units, and yeah. it wasn't even an, auto, an extra hit, it was an extra attack, so you still had to roll to hit with the extra six. Yeah. Um, but now it just changed. they changed that to be each time a model with this ability makes a melee attack, a hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So now this yeah. is usable against everything, not just Imperium, and sixes actually just explode and give you additional hits instead yeah. of making an additional attack. So this is obviously a huge buff. Like, is, this ability it is way a huge, more, way huge better. for them. I'm not a fan of it because I don't like <laughs> chaos. <but. laughs> well, uh, there's people out there that love Medi, so you got to let them have their have their time at the table. And still, notably absent from this is they didn't make them two wounds. Chaos Space Marines still yeah. stuck on one wounds, which. Is... It's pretty brutal, uh, especially considering yeah. their counterparts have been loved on so much lately. Right, yeah. Well, you know, that was kind of the whole thing coming into Ninth Edition, is that the game was basically rebalanced to take into account that Marine units were going to have two wounds. And Chaos Space Marines are still stuck with one wound apiece. Yeah, didn't quite and get that, that balance. <laughs> I, You know, if I if, if I would have known they were going to do an FAQ like this one, I would have guessed that Chaos Space Marines going to two wounds was going to be one of the easy things to do, but we still didn't get that. No, um, all right. So at any rate, we'll have to see what the future of Chaos Space Marines are. But Death to the False Emperor, definitely very powerful now, and not just situational and okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's really good. Um, I, can't, I can't complain for them, but I can complain as their opponents. <laughs> uh, so the next uh, the next section is about the Jakari points updates, and these are very similar to Admech. Uh, everything went up a considerable amount. Raiders went up, thank goodness. Um, Dark Lances went up, which is good. Um, but again, this kind of change is what we've come to expect, and I don't think there was a single surprise in the Jakari section. No. Um, they just got hit with points increase, and I think that that's going to do what points increases always do, and it's going to make the list change a little bit, and they're not going to be as efficient with cramming a bunch of Raiders and Dark Lances into lists anymore. So, yeah, that that's true. Uh, that, uh, yeah, it's just pretty much cut and dry. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it is what it always will be. It has been. Well, at least has been. Hopefully it won't be. Yeah. Uh, but again, Drakari's in the same boat as Admech to me, that even with these points changes, I don't see them being anything but a top tier army. Their codex is just so good. There's so much synergy, and everything was already so cheap to begin with, that I don't think these points increases are going to take them out of the upper echelon of armies right now. Um, so ultimately, I think they're going to be just fine. Um, so we'll move on to the next section, which I'm very excited to talk about. Yeah, like, Imperial this, is, Knights. this is my favorite one, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights. So they all, all vehicle models with the Imperial Knights or Chaos Knights faction keyword gain the Towering Foe ability, which means this model counts as five models when determining control of an objective marker. If it's a Titanic model, so one of the big knights, it instead counts as 10. And then uh, there's another change where if every model from your army has either the Chaos Knights or Imperial Knights faction keyword, excluding agents of Imperium unaligned stuff, uh, then all Armager class or War Dog models from your army gain OBSEC. So this makes Knights be able to play Ninth Edition. Yeah, like, it, it makes them viable. Way to go, guys. Welcome to the game. Like, like it, this is awesome to have the Armagers have OBSEC and count as five models. Yeah. Means that, and like those guys have crazy movement too. I think they have like 14 inch movement or something. Like they're actually going to be able to go up and contest objectives early in the game now. And that's a super cool, awesome change. Uh, this one, this one really excites me, and I'm really excited to see what the future of Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights looks like with I, this. Oh, mind. I know. I don't even have an army though, but you know, I do have those two uh, mini knights. But you know, they're 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 for the Admech army that I never play. But the uh, uh, no, I'm excited. I, that looks like a lot of fun. And uh, if I had the money, I'd probably would get a knights army just because those honestly, it's probably one of my the uh, the armies that I want the most, but never found the reason to do it because they just they weren't really viable. Yeah, yeah, well, I think that this is a great change in the right direction for them. So, um, 
it, it's going to be awesome. I know, uh, I know some of the people that are play area play nights, so I'm excited to see what they do with it. Um, but I, I, and I just love this change. This yeah. is an easy change. It's in line with what ninth edition is all about. It lets them play objectives. Um, and ultimately it's a good thing. And it's, it's awesome too, because it was a rule that um, the sons of behemoth or gargants or whatever in age of Sigmar had yeah. where they count as multiple models. Yeah. And I love that. Like it works in age of Sigmar and I love that they just brought it over to 40 K. Cause it makes sense for knights. Yeah. Like true. they should count. Like, it, it, anyway. took a, it took a little longer than I thought it was, should have being that it worked <laughs> so well over there, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Necrons. Necrons got a lot of love with this FAQ. They um, so, yeah. They, Widely regarded as the worst ninth, worst ninth edition codex. Very few things had core, so a lot of their synergy only applied to very few units. Um, but what this FAQ does is it's add the core keyword uh, to Canoptech, uh, Ascentherites, uh, Reanimators, Wraiths, Flayed Ones, Locust Destroyers, Heavy Destroyers, Ophidian Destroyers, Scorpic Destroyers, and Triarch Praetorians. Yeah. Um, obviously in ninth edition, the core tag is uh, the tag of love, right? That yeah. means that all your auras affect them, um it means they get access to more stratagems it's your uh, synergy i mean absolutely yeah um and this is particularly exciting uh i love that they gave it to flayed ones i think flayed ones are going to be really interesting now um and also destroyers so uh necrons have a few things that core can really do number one is they get my will be done which is a necron buff that uh you're overlord can choose a unit and give it plus one to hit but it only applies to core units so in the past you would end up putting it on like your necron warriors or your immortals there's very few good targets for it but the fact that you can target destroyers with it makes them super scary both the locust version and the score pack version like and also the other big thing is they have a this awesome relic called veil of darkness where they basically get to redeploy something but it only redeploys the character that has it and a core unit yeah. Uh, and before, again, there just wasn't a lot of interesting stuff to teleport around with it. But now you've got like this laundry basket of really cool options that I think is really going to open up what Necrons can do. I don't think this makes them a top tier army, but I think it makes them very competitive with the B tier armies. And that's ultimately what like you want to be, right? You want everything to be able to compete. And I think this does that for Necrons. We'll see to what extent coming up in the future. Yeah, I mean, well, I, th I think in, in with any army... If you know it the way that you should know it and can play it the way that you know, it, like if you will it well, you could compete. But like this definitely puts Necrons in a in a in a positive place where they they have a better chance of winning. And I think that's oh uh, way better than where they were before. Yeah, for no, sure. I, th I think it's definitely a plus for the army for the the game in general. Just I, I just hate yeah. seeing an army just just being so bad. Yeah. Um, and like you know, it's somebody's gotta have the tag, but the worst tag that you could possibly have right now is the worst ninth edition codex tag. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's definitely because you know there's hope for the armies that are still that are bad but have eighth edition codexes, yeah. right? Uh, uh, looking at Gene Stuthercult and Tau, which yeah. are obviously the two worst armies, but they're getting codexes very soon. Uh, Necrons don't have any hope for a codex anytime soon, so uh, hopefully we'll see what this does. And but. The, the cool thing about this whole announcement is that if this isn't enough, maybe in another quarter we'll get another FAQ and they'll do something else with it. And that's, that's yeah, ultimately that's, cool. That is pretty cool. Um, so we'll move on to the final section. And one of the weirder ones uh, is the orc changes. Um, so it makes it so when mustering an orc's army, it cannot include more than one of each of the following units. Uh, boom deck of snaz wagons, custom boom blasters, mega trap scrap jets, ruck a truck squig buggies, and shock jump dragsters. I love orc names. I do. Um, They're great. Anyway, so these are all the buggy units that can be taken in units of three. So you can still bring three models, but you can no longer just spam nine of a buggy anymore because you can't bring three units of three yeah. of the. And then, you know, there were some obviously some big, like, offenders here with the mega track scrap jets being so good and the rucka truck squig buggies being so good yeah um i expected just a points hike this is a very strange change like just having this restriction that only applies to orcs and only specifically these buggy units is like a really nice change in a way that like games workshops never made a change like this before to my knowledge um and ultimately i think nobody's going to shed a tear that nine squig buggy lists aren't around anymore. Yeah. They just weren't fun to play against. Yeah. Um, 
I guess if you're the orc player out there that just ordered a bunch of squig buggies, you're probably shedding tears. But yeah, other than that, I think this is only going to be good for the health of the game. But it is a weird change that's kind of out of line with how they've done things in the past. This might be a good time to, to hit the eBay up for some of these uh, buggies. I'm pretty sure they're getting sold like crazy. Right oh, now. yeah, yeah. Eddie, Eddie's actually collecting an orc army. This might be an excellent time to pick up some squig buggies if you want to start playing orcs. Yeah. <laughs> All these people with nine only need three now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that the, uh, the, uh, the second secondary market is being flooded right now. But, hey, that means prices yeah. are going to go down. That's great. Um, uh, no, it, it's an interesting way that they did it. I don't know. It... Uh, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm a fan of how they went about it. It 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 just it's definitely a target attack when you're just doing it with the orcs. Yeah. Um. But I I I mean I guess you can't complain because it was broken. But I'm like like I said, it, it was not fun to play against the nine squig buggy lists. Like that's just a miserable game of 40k. Oh yeah. Um. But it is just a weird way to change it and um. I feel bad for people that bought all those squid buggies, but at the same time, that's the risk that you run to when you chase the meta, right? Yeah. Like, sometimes you get burned when you chase the meta. Especially when you know it's a broken um, meta. Like, it's it's, it's right, inevitable. Yeah. It's going to get it's going to get nerfed. Yeah, for sure. Um at the end of the day, I still think orcs are going to be pretty competitive. Uh unlike Drukari and Admech, I don't think the rest of their codex is strong enough that they're still going to be one of the top 3 armies like they have been leading into this FAQ. Yeah. But I still think they're going to be, you know, they're not going to go down to suddenly being worse than Space Marines or anything. Like, Orcs are still going to be a very competitive army going forward. Yeah. Um, you, you know who I think, you know, surprisingly wins this with not even being having making an appearance on this, right? Yeah, Grey Knights. Grey, Grey Knights, Knights suspiciously <laughs> absent from this list. <laughs> I, think, um, I, I think they, they just came out uh, pretty strong. Wow, that's... Uh... Yeah, and I think they're they're probably waiting for more info because Grey Knights are the newest army like that are that is at a top table yeah. right now, and I th and ultimately I don't think Grey Knights are oppressive in the same way that Admech and Drukari were. Yeah, and they weren't as clearly broken like the Orc buggy lists. Yeah, and the the flyer lists like the Grey Knights just are a little bit too efficient, like. They probably just need slight point hikes that I'm expecting to see when chapter approved comes around. Yeah, I'm expecting to see Dread Knights to go up in points a little bit. They're definitely too cheap for what they do. And I'm expecting to see Interceptors go up a little bit. Um, but ultimately, I don't think there's anything like unusual with the Grey Knights that requires this kind of strange change. I think it's just going to be a points change and that'll bring them into line. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I think there were four top armies going into this FAQ. There was Admech, Drukari, Orcs, and Grey Knights. And three of the four made the list, which means the big winner of this change was the Grey Knights. But also, I think the biggest winners from this FAQ change were the people that got buffs from this. The Astro Militarum changes, the yeah. Knights changes, the Necrons, Necrons changes. Yeah. Like, I think those are all huge, big deals. Uh, ultimately, I think that a lot of people are going to be incredibly happy with this FAQ. Yeah, no, I I agree with you, and I, I really think that um, that I actually the way the like the way it looks too. It's it's uh, it's very intriguing and aesthetically pleasing. But uh, <laughs> no, I think I think that they they did a pretty good job with it, and I I can't complain um with with the changes honestly because you know honestly they don't really affect me so much. I mean I do have a an admec army, but I mean it's not even hardly put together or painted, so I'm not even gonna complain about it. But like. Um, even if I wasn't like big into Admech, you, you can't say you didn't expect this. Right. Um, yeah. It's like orcs. You can't say you didn't expect this at some point. Um, so like it, 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 yeah, it was inevitable. I, I mean, as a gray Knight player, I would not have been surprised to see like dread Knights get a points increase here. In fact, I'm surprised that they didn't. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, like I said, I don't, I don't think they're, they're not as big of offenders as like the other, the other our top armies are. So, uh, at any rate, what did you guys think of these changes? Were you happy? Were you mad? Uh, did you cheer? Did you cry? Let us know down in the comments. Uh, or you can find a link to our Discord server in the description below. Come in here, chat with us, and uh, we'll talk about these changes. What do you want to see in future updates? Do you like this direction for 40k? Or do you prefer the old method where they only did tiny points adjustments here and there? Uh, I know for me, I love this, but uh, let me know how you guys feel down in the comments below. If you like this video, you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. It helps us greatly. You'll get notified when we get uh, new videos put up. Um, if you want to support the channel, we'll have our affiliate link to Amazon down in the description below. Uh, you can click on that. Anything you buy on Amazon, we get a tiny little kickback of that, and we use it to reinvest directly back into the channel.
Um, at any rate, thank you guys so much for watching. We love y'all and keep playing games. We'll see you next week. Bye.